I'm taking a break this week from the technical and going back to the creative side of things for a little while. And this week's video was inspired by a lesson from class. And we were talking about how to create ruffles and how to draw them in Illustrator. And I showed my class how to draw a ruffle brush. So now I'm going to show you. Take a look. The first thing you'll want to do is show your rulers and drag two horizontal guides to indicate the width of your brush. This will help you keep the brush straight as you draw. Next, you'll draw the first ruffle. And the goal here is to make it look dimensional, like some parts are poofing out while other sections are falling behind it. So starting with the part that is poofing out, I'll draw one ruffle. Once you do the forward ruffle, you want to create a curved line to indicate the fabric that falls behind it. Then I'll add a couple more ruffles and I'm just going to drag a copy of the original ruffle I drew and drag the curved line as well. You can also add in some wrinkle marks at the top of the ruffles to give the brush a little more character if you want to. To create the repeat, use the scissors tool and cut the curved line at the end of the ruffles. I usually try to cut it in half, but it really doesn't matter if you don't do it exactly at the halfway mark. And instead of deleting the extra half of the curved line, you're going to move it to the other side of the brush, right in front of the first ruffle. Hold the shift key and drag it until the edge aligns with the edge of your ruffle. Now, just select all of the ruffle elements, drag and drop it into the brushes panel. When you're prompted, choose pattern brush as the brush type and then press OK. In the pattern brush options box, name your brush and then press OK. To test your brush, draw a line with the pen or pencil tool and then apply the brush. Make sure the line is long enough to see your brush repeating at least two or three times so you can really see what the repeat looks like. If the brush is too big for your sketch, change your stroke weight to make it smaller. You'll notice that the ends of your brush are just cut off, which unless your ruffle is going into a seam, doesn't really look that good. So in order to make the ruffle look like there's a definite beginning and ending, you need to create a start and end tile. To create the start tile, use the original artwork. If you no longer have it, you can drag the repeat out of the brushes panel and onto the artboard. It will have the auto-generated corner tile artwork with it, which you don't need. So ungroup and delete this portion of the artwork. You'll also need to ungroup the original artwork one more time. You'll notice there's an extra box around the artwork. This is a definition box, which automatically generates when you don't create one yourself. For what we're about to do, you don't need to worry about this box. To create the start tile, we're going to drag a copy of the last ruffle and the rest of the curved line that we cut and move it to the front of the brush. And just to make the brush look more random and not so uniform, I'm going to create a new wrinkle line over the ruffle. To add the start tile to the existing brush, I'm going to select just the new part of the brush and drag it to the brushes panel. And instead of just dropping it in the panel, I'm going to press the Option key, Alt on a PC, before I let go of the mouse. Pressing this key and hovering over the brush will allow you to paste in different parts of the brush. And as you can see, as I move the mouse, there's a black box that highlights different sections or tiles of the brush. The second to last box is the Start tile. So I'm going to move my mouse to highlight that section and let go of the mouse before I let go of my Option or Alt key. Once I let go, the Pattern Brush Options box appears, and you should see the Start tile, which is the fourth box above the preview, now populated with your new artwork. When you press OK, if you've used that brush already on the page, 
Illustrator will give you an alert to choose whether you want to apply the changes to the brushes already in use or leave the brushes being used on the page as is and any new brushes you create will have the new changes. Usually, you'll want to choose Apply to Strokes to update what's being used on your sketches already. And once you choose that option, your brushes will automatically update. Repeat the same steps to do the end tile, this time dragging a copy of the first ruffle and the partial curve line attached to it to the end of the brush. And when you drag into the brushes panel, drag it to the last box to update the end tile. So for hems and sleeves, something where the ruffle is a little more free flowing, you may want to go ahead and use your pen or pencil tool to draw it. But for something like this, where it's a trim, it's always a good idea to go ahead and make it into a brush. It will save you a lot of time. And you can save it for another time in your CC library so that you don't have to draw it again. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.